for the rectal neuroendocrine neoplasms, mostly, again, these are very indolent um, um, polyps in the rectum, usually less than a centimetre in size, um, often removed incidentally, uh, found and removed um, at a standard colonoscopy, and it just turns up that this is a neuroendocrine uh, neoplasm. What should one do? Usually, if the polyp's been uh, removed and it's less than a centimetre, often nothing else needs to be done. We might need to check the local area with a, uh, a torch test, a flexible sigmoidoscopy, a limited uh, a torch test looking at that bit of the colon, sometimes doing a repeat colonoscopy. We might do an endoanal or endorectal ultrasound scan with a little probe going into the bottom to look to check that there's no uh, defect of, uh, or, or remaining uh, neoplasm in, in that area. And it also looks to make sure that there's no uh, lymph nodes involved. And an MRI of the pelvis also will check that out to make sure there's no local spread or involvement. And very occasionally, particularly if the polyp was greater than a centimetre or even two centimetres in size, you might consider do a, doing a gallium oxidate PET scan in, in that uh, scenario. Most of those polyps, though, are, are, can be removed uh, endoscopically. For the larger neuroendocrine uh, neoplasms within the rectum, uh, certainly greater than one and a half or two centimetres in size, um, it might be possible to remove um, between one and a half, two centimetres, remove the polyps endoscopically. Again, it needs to be an expert endoscopist doing it uh, who can make sure that they've cleared uh, all the polyp um, and that might need special endoscopic techniques. So you want to make sure that that endoscopist is very proficient in doing that. Occasionally limited um, surgery can be required to remove uh, larger polyps from that area and to check the lymph nodes out um, as well. If the spread of a, a rectal neuroendocrine neoplasm to other parts of the body, then one might use the somatostatin analogs, oxytide or lanreotide, monthly injections as first line, but quite commonly one would end up using um, Lutithera, Lutetium-177, dotaoctreotate as the targeted uh, therapy um, second line in, in those patients with uh, advanced disease. And because very occasionally rectal neuroendocrine neoplasms can be uh, more aggressive, we sometimes use chemotherapy. And it would tend to be the chemotherapy used in other colon cancers such as Folfox. Um, but that would be up to your oncologist to make a decision in regard of that. And the importance is to understand the pathology and what the biopsy showed and to make sure that the right staging tests have been performed with the gallium oxidate PET scan and CT MRI imaging.